Li Shangjing, Falling Blossoms. Guests have left the high pavilion. In the little garden, petals fly in chaos. They fall in patches on the curving path, drifting far towards the sunset. Heart broken, I can't bear to sweep them. I watch them and long for their return. My heart dies at the end of spring. Tears, for sure, will soak my clothes. So here we have the third of Li Shangjing's uh, pentasyllabic regulated uh, poems in this anthology. The topic of this poem seems pretty conventional. I can hardly imagine a more conventional topic possible for a poem. Um, in the Eastern tradition, and this is typical in China and in Japan, which absorbed most of its literature from, from, from China anyway, although it gave it a different twist. One of the most poignant sights is uh, the falling of the trees blossoms. Uh, especially in the Japanese tradition, this is focused on uh, cherry tree blossoms, sakura, uh, which last very, 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 very briefly. Uh, no longer than a week from their period of splendor to their falling. They're a spring sight, and uh, their fugacity uh, intensifies their beauty. This refers to a very oriental concept, a Japanese concept, which is called mono no aware, uh, a sadness at the transience of things, which um, is vaguely similar to what we have in the West, perhaps in Virgil's Lacrima Rerum. This sadness at the passage of beauty, at the disappearance of beauty, at the impermanence of things in our material realm. Of course, this is um, tinted differently in East Asia because of the influence of Buddhism, as the Buddhist religious thought emphasizes the fact that everything is permanent and that everything is transient and that even the desire for beauty to stop and to last is uh, misguided, is uh, the wrong path, because it leads to the path of attachment, which is the path that does not allow you to break out of the wheel of samsara. Anyway, uh, poems describing the sadness experienced by the viewer in spring when the, mm, when the petals from the, from the trees uh, fall about, are pushed away by the wind, are a staple fare of, of Six Dynasties poetry, as such it was imported into, into Japan. And this is a very good exemplar of this sort of poetry. Uh, the petals are meant to represent the passage of time, the disappearance of beauty, the end of youth, which, after all, this is a poem about late spring. So the falling petals reinforce, and the end of the season, reinforce the idea that the prime of a group of people, the prime of the trees, the prime of the spring, the prime, perhaps, of the poet, is about to pass, uh, or at least if not the prime, the youthful, exuberant uh, age of love, which is spring in almost every culture. Uh, so that's the main topic of the poem. Uh, the sadness at the passage of spring, uh, epitomized by the fall of the blossoms, of unspecified blossoms. We don't know what type of blossoms are they, but being spring, being late spring, mm, Definitely not plum blossoms, which are a favorite among Chinese poets, but they're an early spring tree. It could be um, peach blossoms, perhaps, because Chinese are quite fond of them. Okie dokie. Uh, uh, a sub-theme uh, is, uh, you, you know, the poem is located in a very specific place. It's a garden. It's a little garden that we are supposed to believe that belongs or is under the stewardship of Li Shangjing. There has been a party in that in that garden shortly before the poem starts. Uh, in fact, the poem starts when the guests who came to the party leave. And just like they leave, the petals also seem to be trailing after them, leaving them. So you have this accumulation of images, of, 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 of transience, of ending, of, uh, of, of passing away, of moving on. And I think that's all we can say for the general spirit, for the general tone of the poem. As I said, the topic is very, very conventional. And as opposed to the usual um, stereotypes uh, that are expected of Li Shangjing's poetry, it feels like a pretty straightforward poem. It doesn't have any dark symbolism or imagery that I can perceive in the translation. It seems pretty straightforward. 
Let's take a look at the poem as usual, couplet by couplet. Guests have left the high pavilion. In the little garden, petals fly in chaos. So the first poem starts as you sorry, the first couplet starts as usual by locating us. The title didn't didn't geographically locate us. It creates the background situation for us, uh, the, the time and the place, more the place than the time. The time is hinted at a bit later. We know what's been happening before the poem. There's been a banquet. The guests are leaving the high pavilion, so they've been probably, you know, a group of scholar officials enjoying what they do best, which is drinking together, reciting poetry, enjoying each other's conversation. The guests have left as a shadow of the guests in the little garden, so, you know, a very a very private sphere, a very private domain of pleasure and intimacy. In this garden, the shadows of the departed can be seen perhaps in the petals. The petals are flying around, pushed by the winds. And they follow no apparent order. And it's chaotic flight. So we get this image of an empty garden with petals flying to and fro, perhaps evoking those humans, those scholar officials who have just left. Second couplet. They fall in patches on the curving path, drifting far toward the sunset. So the second couplet continues with the image of the petals. It follows the petals as they keep being pushed around by the wind. Uh, they fall in patches, so they're going down. Yeah, They're falling from the trees, presumably. And they're falling on the curving path. So path on the way that probably the, the guests have followed just before them. And they drift far towards the sunset. So now we get an indication of what time of day it is. We know we're in a little garden with a pavilion. And we know it's the end of the day. It's sunset. Which again, um, like other symbols that appear in Chinese poetry, is clearly pushing us towards the melancholy feeling of the death of the day. The death of the petals falling from the trees. The death of the party. The death of the day. Heartbroken. I can't bear to sweep them. I watch them and long for the return. So this is interesting. The third couplet continues with the image of the, the, the petals, of the falling petals, of the scattering petals, but it changes the focus. The focus is no longer in a relatively objective description, on a relatively naturalistic viewpoint of the petals flying to and fro in the garden. The focus now moves to the poetic persona, to his own voice and to his own subjectivity. How is the poet who is seeing this scene feeling? And the first adjective clearly hammers the point in. Heartbroken. I can't bear to sweep them. I watch them and long for their return. The poet wishes the petals would go back up the tree. He, the poet wishes he could stop time. The poet wishes spring could last, if not forever, at least a little longer. He is aware of its transience and he laments it. And uh, again, we're talking about petals because that, that's what's explicitly being mentioned here. But we could think of, of the guests also, and we could read this also as a desire for the guests who have parted, the friends who are away now, to return and come back. Finally, uh, so there's longing and there's a sadness at the departure of, of, of friends and sadness, longing at the passage of time. And at the disappearance of beauty, at the destruction of beauty, with the onset of, of old age and time. Finally, the conclusion keeps on hammering in the, the, the sad, desolate, melancholy feelings of the poet, but it um, perhaps makes them more visual by, by, by mm, coalescing them into two images. My heart dies at the end of spring. Tears, for sure, will soak my clothes. So the heart of the poet is dying, no, it's a very intense, very strong image. His heart is breaking under the pressure. We already had heart broken in line uh, five. Now we have my heart dies in line seven. And the end of spring. So this gives us the last indication of the season of the moment. And remember, it's sunset, it's late spring. The petals have fallen, the party has ended. The party has ended could be used as a more generic um, metaphor for the whole poem. Yeah? Night comes. The party has finished. Tears for sure will soak my clothes. Uh, so the poem ends with a pretty visual and effective, but pretty conventional image as well. That is, 
the scholar with his uh, robes soaked or his sleeves soaked by the numerous tears uh, that he emits. You know, it's a pretty staple fare of classical Chinese Japanese poetry, and uh, so much so that you know it doesn't feel very, very, very moving unless it's you know well constructed, well crafted as an end. Um, not a bad poem. I would have expected a little bit more of Li Shangjing, but um, then again, we have to remember something I mentioned time and time again. Li Shangjing is a very Baroque, very difficult poet, and this anthology, 300 Tang Poems, is an 18th century anthology of Tang poets designed for school children. This is meant to be the first primer to teach a young child how to appreciate and in the future imitate poetry like this, which means it has to choose, perforce, pretty conventional topics with pretty conventional wording, as easy as possible. So a balance needs to be struck between beauty of the poem, but also between extreme conventionality, you know, uh, fitting into the different types, categories, classes, stereotypes of, of genres of uh, classical Chinese poetry. And this is a perfect example of this subtype of poetry, Sadness at the End of Spring. <laughs> 